Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for dropping by. Well, let's just get the sponsors out of the way first and uh, don't fast forward because if you're into astronomy and you obviously are into astronomy, otherwise you wouldn't have clicked this video, uh, my sponsors are now SV Boney. Now, if you don't or don't know who SV Boney are, well, they're everything astronomical basically apart from their prices now i've been using sv boney for years way before uh, my youtube channel and uh, in my opinion unbeatable prices with extremely good quality products so if it's a telescope an eyepiece a new camera you're after uh have a look in the link in the description below because you will be doing yourselves a massive favor and saving yourselves a uh, bit of money uh, and also you'll be doing me a tiny any favor as well because I do get a small percentage for any sales done in the link below. Now, as you know, telescopes come in two different varieties. You have refracting telescopes, such as this one, which just use lenses. And of course, there's uh, reflecting type telescopes, which use mirrors. And of course, there is uh, a mixture of the two, which actually use mirrors and uh, lenses. But today, I just want to talk about the good old fashioned refractor. Now, there's a lot on the internet on uh, how to maintain a reflecting type telescope. You probably heard collimation and such like, but there's not a lot about actually checking and making sure that your refracting telescope is in ship shape also. So what I've done, I've just put this little video together just for you to do some little checks yourselves and don't worry, um, nothing's uh, hard in this at all. Um, it's just like I say, a little, little routine checks that you can do and I'll give you a few solutions if you do come across some problems. Uh, because uh, refractors are one of my favourite types of telescopes, I love refractors, and uh, you may think that you're not quite getting the best views out of your refractor no matter what size it is and uh, like I said we're going to cover uh, quite a few uh, little common problems that these uh, entry-level refractors uh, do get from time to time. Now one of the main issues uh, with entry-level uh, refractors is always usually down at this end um, the focuser. Now this is not a video about upgrading in, in any shape or form so we're not really going to be talking about upgrading the hardware it's just like I say maintaining an MOT if you like of your refractor. Um, and now the first thing and, and the most important thing to check on a refractor is that this focusing tube is actually in a line with the telescope is it is perfectly alignment and dead center um often uh, you've got to remember these things are mass produced and occasionally you know little faults slip through uh, um, every now and then and uh, there's a really easy test that you can do to check that there's uh, that the focusing tube is in alignment and that is to just remove your lens cover i'll just bring the telescope up a little bit uh remove your lens covers and uh, don't bother putting any eyepiece in the telescope and just what you want to do is just simply stand over the telescope as central as you can okay so you don't want to be over this way or that way as far as cl close one eye as though you're looking through an eyepiece but don't go down and look straight down uh you can leave your diagonal in by the way for this it's not a problem and look directly down the, sh the tube so you as as close as you can to be directly above it now what you should be seeing is just a complete perfect circle of light that's it uh you shouldn't be seeing any kind of cresiting or like like almost like a moon phase if you like um it should be all concentric circles now you can do the, exactly the same on the other end of the telescope as well spin it round and just look down this end this end of the telescope and again um if you do have one of those um lens covers where it's got a centerpiece that comes off uh, use that in this case and then you give you a more central view of the uh, actual looking down the tube place that on and again look down the the, uh, the tube close one eye and uh, you should be just seeing concentric circles all even circles you should not be seeing any kind of light like I say phasing in the circles at all now I've probably been flashing some images up of uh, good examples and bad examples now if unfortunately you do have a bad example and you think that your uh, focusing tube is out of alignment 
don't panic. It's quite an easy fix. Um, now, the first thing to do is just check that if your um, now not all, not all telescopes have this feature, but some do. Uh, just have a look over here on your focuser at the top of your focuser, and if you see these uh, two little grommet screws, they're like like two little Allen grommet screws. Well, they're not actually uh, to fix the housing in any shape. They are actually balancing screws for your focusing tube, and they just act like a seesaw, if you like. Uh, one push is one down it lifts the other end up uh, and vice versa and adjusting these will actually uh, alter the focusing tube handle and get it straight if it is down because that's wh where the problem will be it'll either be falling away that way or so in some cases it's up this way um, and like I say you'll be able to tell that with just looking down and if you have got uh, lucky enough to have these um, collimating screws if you like or adjustment screws here just do exactly the same you just sight here with one eye and just Alter those until you get nice, even concentric circles. Now, if your telescope doesn't have these adjustment screws and you still think it looks a little bit of a um, funny handle, um, I'll just th this one will be probably easy to uh, demonstrate on. If you have a look um, around here, you can see that there's a f there's some fixing screws. You usually got three three fixing screws that go around. There's, there's some on here as well, and um, what you can find with those is if you loosen those off a little bit, um, instead of it being a straight drilled hole that's through there, there is actually, there are actually like an oval slot. So in actual fact, the focuser can actually move around a little bit and you do have a little bit of leeway. Um, this is usually on these fixed focusers. So have a look at that because sometimes uh, these can be not be fitted square again from the factory. It's usually an issue from the factory. Another thing is uh, sometimes, it, uh, very rare this, but I have seen it where this end of the tube has not been cut square it's been slightly out a little bit um, so again you can just have that little bit of adjustment just to move it because um, even just a tiny little bit when this focuser tube is just a little bit out you'll notice it just doesn't look right down here when you look down the tube uh, so just doing these fine fine adjustments um, is just going to make sure that this focusing tube is in perfect alignment with your main objective. Now the other thing that's often overlooked or beginners often overlook is um, is the movement or how the focuser actually operates. Now it's important again I mean focusing you've got to remember this is the most important part of any telescope uh, if this is not right you, you're never going to get a good image uh, but it's important that this is not too stiff and it's not too loose. And um, if again, I'll use this little one. If you look on your telescope, or they all vary a little bit. If you look underneath where the actual wheel um, is fastened, um, there is a plate there with two or maybe four Phillips screws usually. Now that isn't just, uh, them screws are not just there to uh, keep that plate on. Underneath there, there's actually a tension spring. So the tighter you tighten those springs down, the more friction you're gonna cause on uh, this focusing wheel here so you can adjust that now you don't want it too loose so it's like you can pull it out by hand sort of thing or maybe if you put your mobile phone on the end you know your telescope is pointing at the sky you don't want the focusing to, to fall out of focus uh, so it doesn't want to be too loose and it does, certainly doesn't want to be too tight um, being a little bit loose in actual fact is better than it being too tight uh, because you may have found that on eye magnification the slightest little uh, touch of a telescope and the image is wobbling all over so you just want to be so you can just finger you know adjust the um, the focuser with it, um, kick gloves if you like so you're hardly touching it now, no MOT would be complete without an oil change. And yes, you do need to change the oil on a telescope. <laughs> no, don't worry, I've not lost the plot. Uh, what I'm talking about is, again, uh, this, um, the focusing wheel here. Now, inside here, what they do from factory is put this horrible, sticky, glucky, gunky grease in there. Now, this is not a, necess a necessity in any shape or form, but if you are servicing your, uh, your telescope and you've got some of this kicking around, you want to 
totally degrease this, get rid of all that sticky gunk and use some lithium grease. Uh, it's the best thing to use on uh, telescope focuses. You'll make, you'll, you won't believe the difference it makes to get rid of that uh, sticky, uh, horrible, uh, claggy glue. And then you can get your balance just right with your tension springs as it were, uh, because you can, you can never get a tension when there's uh, treacle uh, <laughs> behind the guard. So uh, yeah, treat your telescope to a little bit of lithium and grease. Now, the next thing to work is worth checking is your objective lenses at the front of the telescope. Now, don't worry, we're not going to be taking them out or anything like that. Um, but what you'll find um, is you, you, if your telescope is you're still not happy with the views, you may have what's called pinched optics. Now, this is just simply when there's some kind of clamp pushing down on uh, the lenses or mirrors that's too tight and actually distorts the image, basically. And where the problem comes and this is something i do with every refractor that i get these days um, you want to remove your lens cover first sorry not your lens cover your dust um, dew shield that's the word i'm looking for dew shield uh, just remove your dew shield and uh, what we're going to do now is loosen this um, retaining ring here. Now, if you look closely at your telescope, you'll notice uh, some telescopes have one of those slots, like two slots, um, that you need a special tool for that nobody ever has. Uh, you can buy them, by the way. I've, I've looked into it. Uh, they're not expensive. I must get one, myself one because, uh, you know, I'm forever fiddling with telescopes and eyepieces. Uh, but, uh, yeah, what, it's one of those uh, type of... Um, uh, screws that you use two screwdrivers with. Yeah, we've all done it and uh, we've all damaged things. So if you are going to be using two screwdrivers, please be careful, guys. Uh, you will just wreck your telescope if you slip. Uh, so you have been warned. I, I'm not holding any responsibility uh, and I have told you to use the correct tool. But if you are lucky, uh, you may have one like my telescope here where you can just literally get it and use your hand and undo it. Uh, and what you'll find is this is incredibly tight. I don't know why they do this from factories, but they do. They seem to just tighten this so tight. I don't, I'm surprised they don't crack the lenses. Uh, it re they really do need backing off, guys. So something to check on your telescope is to loosen this ring off, okay? You literally want it. So when you start tightening it, as soon as you can feel it, touch the lenses, stop. That's it. That's enough. Uh, you do not want it any tighter than that. Now, the other thing, just to check before you actually do that, while you're in this stage of having this uh, this retaining ring loose, is to take just loosen it off quite a bit and just give the telescope a little tap like this, all right, all the way around, just around the lenses, because just occasionally these lenses can be just sad a little bit wrong and not seated correctly in the housing of the telescope. Again, this can become from uh, from the factory where they just not dropped in because usually these are machines so precise that slightest, you know, if you get them just slightly wrong a little bit, uh, they don't sit right. So it's just worth, so like I say, you loosen your retaining ring off, just give it a little tap like that. You're not going to break anything, don't worry. And then just tighten it up again, but not tighten it just till it touches the tops of the lenses. And there we go. That's all you need. So like I say, the tapping of the telescope usually um, is very rare that the, the lenses are, you know, unless you've actually dropped it or maybe taken it apart yourself by uh, cleaning or something. Uh, but it's just worth checking that. But definitely loosen this uh, retaining ring off, folks, on all your telescopes. If you've got some kicking around, do it on them all because <laughs> you'll find that they're so tight and it's totally unnecessary. And final thing on our MOT is cleaning. Uh, when or how often should you clean the lenses of your telescope? And to be the truth of it is, folks, unless they're absolutely riddled with grease or something, don't. Uh, you tend to do more damage cleaning uh, telescope optics than you do good. Uh, the truth of the matter is, that, like I say, they have to be incredibly bad. Bad If you've just got a uh, 
small coating of dust on there it's not going to affect your image or your views in any shape or form the only time you really want to be cleaning or using any kind of lens cleaning solution on objective lenses is if you accidentally touch the front of the lens and you've got a big greasy finger mark or something like that it, ha it has to be you know pretty bad for you to start using cleaning solutions your best friend is one of these uh, it is with uh, any uh, optics basically in your diagonals uh, and your objectives just a quick blast of this is all you need really when it comes to cleaning just keep your dust covers on at all times maybe even if you leave your telescope set up like i do i've got a uh, a sheet i just throw over it uh, and just keep the dust off so when it comes to cleaning only when absolute necessary so there you go, folks, my MOT of a refracting telescope. Uh, I hope it's been of some use to you and a help to you. Uh, like I say, there's not a lot on uh, maintaining these things and uh, and keeping them to ship shape, but now there is, at least there's one out there. <laughs> well, that's about it for another video, folks. Thank you so much if you've watched this far. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below. And in the meantime, take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.